30 million years ago, in what would become modern day Pakistan, the enormous silhouette of the tallest animal of its day blocks the horizon over its savanna like landscape. It was named Parasitherium and was one of the largest mammals that has ever existed. Its body shape was at least somewhat reminiscent of a giraffe, but giraffes wouldn't evolve for another 20 million years. And despite its size, it wasn't related to elephants either. It was actually most closely related to rhinos. However, in the flesh, its skull most likely supported a proboscis. This is because, whereas the five living rhino species today are fairly similar and on the brink of extinction, the superfamily that contains rhinos was once considerably larger and more diverse, and spread much further north than today, surviving in colder climates. The earliest rhino ancestor in the fossil record was a small creature named Hyracius that was hornless and about the size of a pig. They were known from North America around 50 million years ago in a time known as the Eocene, where global temperatures were much higher than today, and so its American habitat would have been dense jungle at this point in history. Rhino's closest living relatives are horses and tapirs, and if you travelled back to the early Eocene, you would struggle to tell their ancestors apart. This is because they all lived in a similar way and had less time to diversify into different niches. But also, this is a general rule of evolution, that the further you travel back in time, animals tend to look more similar as they are more closely related. Horses, rhinos and tapirs are the only living descendants from a group of animals known as the perissodactyls, that are distinguished because they have an uneven amount of toes with most of the weight being balanced on a single toe in the middle compared with most hoofed animals that are known as the artiodactyls that share most of their weight across two middle toes. Today, the artiodactyls are the considerably more common big herbivorous mammal in most ecosystems, but around 45 to 25 million years ago, the perissodactyls were a lot more populous and diverse. For instance, there was a group of perissodactyls called the caligatheres that had claws and some species had a body shape similar to a gorilla, with longer forelimbs than hind limbs. But like all perissodactyls, their oldest ancestors were small four-legged foragers that would have been similar to Hyracius. The perissodactyls also contained a group of prehistoric animals named the brontotheres that looked a lot like rhinos, however the resemblance was just due to convergent evolution, and they were actually more closely related to horses, and were actually a lot more ancient as well. They lived during the Eocene Epoch, and went extinct around 35 million years ago which was around the time that rhino started to diversify. This was the beginning of an epoch known as the Oligocene, that was almost right in the middle of the present time and the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. The dinosaurs were long extinct, and mammals now dominated and were heavily diversified, but very few of the big mammalian families we know today had evolved, and instead, the Earth's habitats were filled with their very different but similar relatives. Felines and canines had only just evolved, and were small, and definitely not the apex predators. Instead, the largest mammalian carnivores were known as the creodonts, a group of mammals that adapted a lot of the same predatory features as cats and dogs, like sharp retractable claws, although they were actually distantly related. Whales had solidly adapted to life in the sea, but their largest members weren't filter feeders, and instead at this time all whales were toothed predators, with tiny recessive hind fins. And at this point in history, the largest mammals around were a group of long-necked rhinos with a proboscis named the Parasitherium. But it wasn't just Parasitherium, and actually the whole rhino superfamily became considerably more diverse at this time, and it was more diverse than today. At some point during their evolution, the rhino superfamily split, giving rise to the true rhinos, known as the Rhinoceratidae, and the long-necked rhinos, known as the Paraceratidae. In the beginning, the Paraceratidae were quite modestly sized. The earliest Paraceratidae in the fossil record lived in China, and was around the same size as a horse in height, but also in build. And most known species of Paraceratidae were around this size, ranging from a horse to about the size of a moose. But then during the Oligocene period, one member of this group evolved into the largest land animal since the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. Parasitherium was first identified as being related to rhinos by its teeth and parts of the jawbone that were found in Pakistan, so when it was discovered it was thought to essentially just look like a rhino, although scaled up to account for the colossal size of the fossils discovered. Almost immediately, these illustrations were revised for an animal that had a longer neck and legs, 
due to the discovery of some elongated vertebrae and limbo material. For most of the early 19th century, there was a debate between the depictions of Parasitherium as a truly gigantic 20-ton animal with a rhino's build, or a more slender giraffe-like mammal based on some new materials discovered in Russia. Parasitherium's head was also not as rhino-like as first described. Their snout was very narrow, the nasal passage stretched much further back on the skull, and the muscle scars were much larger than what is normal just for lip control all pointing to Parasitherium likely having some sort of proboscis, meaning its head may have been more like a tapir than a rhino. The most up-to-date depictions of Parasitherium have settled somewhere in the middle, of a truly gigantic rhino-like animal and a more giraffe-like creature, meaning that Parasitherium most likely looked like a chunky horse with a proboscis. Although some of the early depictions may have been over-exaggerated, Parasitherium were still truly giant animals. Around 10 years after the initial discovery of Parasitherium, a partial skull was reconstructed from fragmentary remains of different specimens, and it was estimated the creature's skull would have been about 1.3 meters long, making it almost twice the length of a modern rhino skull, and even larger than the skull of an African elephant. However, it isn't known how high this colossal skull would have been carried above the ground, because a complete set of vertebrae has not been discovered for these beasts. However, Parasitherium's limbs are fairly well represented from several different specimens and scaling up from the bones of the largest species of Parasitherium discovered suggests that it would have been able to grow to almost 5 meters tall at the shoulder, which just on its own is taller than an African elephant. So any extra height the neck would have given Parasitherium, it still would have made it larger than any living land mammal. However, there are some prehistoric elephant species that may have been able to exceed Parasitherium in size. One genus of elephant, named Paleoloxodon, that lived up to around 12,000 years ago, had some truly enormous fragmentary remains that may mean some of them may have had similar body size to Parasitherium, but with a larger elephant build, this would have potentially made them the larger animal. The earliest true rhinos in the fossil record first appear a little over 30 million years ago in the very early Oligocene, and would have lived alongside the Paraceratidae, sometimes sharing the same habitats. However, they were often a lot smaller, and there were many species that were a lot smaller than modern rhinos too. One of the oldest known rhinos was called Menoceros, that had a much lighter build than modern rhinos, and was around the size of a pig. Instead of having horns behind one another, its horns were side by side, and this is a trait that was shared by all of the earliest and most primitive true rhinos known. Menoceros lived in North America at a time when a lot of what would become the United States was covered in savanna-like grassland, and their fossils are often found in large groups, suggesting they may have lived in large herds, having a lifestyle more comparable to animals like wildebeest than modern rhinos. These smaller rhinos would go extinct around 20 million years ago. However, bigger North American rhinos that probably lived in a similar way to modern rhinos survived until around 5 million years ago when rhinos went extinct on the continent. The modern living rhinos that exist today first appeared in Asia around 20 million years ago. By the Ice Age around 2 million years ago, all of the more diverse genre of rhino that once existed had gone extinct, and all rhinos were now similar to living rhinos. In addition to the five living species of rhinos, several other species survived, but they went extinct at the end of the Ice Age, most notably the woolly rhino, but also Elasmotherium, a true giant that lived in Ice Age Asia and measured taller than a man at the shoulder and weighed as much as an Asian elephant. The woolly rhino was closely related to living species of rhino, but Elasmotherium was more distantly related and so had certain features that differed, like having its horn on top of its head. However, due to living in a similar climate to woolly rhinos, it is thought that they may have also had fur. So rhinos were a lot more diverse, filling different niches and having different body shapes, while also being more widespread, ranging much further north than they do today. But now only five species remain, and four out of those five species are endangered as well. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my Patreon supporters, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.